Question number nine deals with trigonometric identities. Okay, the first one they have already given the identity for sine a plus b, so we can use it to prove this. So nine a one. So let's start with the left hand side. Sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b, and let's break this down. So sine a plus b is going to be sine a cos b as it is given over here plus cos a sine b then we have this plus now sine a minus b is going to be sine a cos b minus cos a sine b so if we cancel this and this it would be 2 sine a cos b plus sine a cos b is going to be 2 sine a cos b therefore left hand side equals to right hand side so that's all that's proved pretty simple now in question number two what we have to do is using cos a plus b which is given over here we have to prove this double angle rule this is what we have to prove so number two this is going to be left hand side cos 2a let me write it as a plus a so we can now break this down as cos a cos a minus remember cos here it is minus sine a sine a so this would be cos squared a minus sine squared a so that's the identity now in order to prove this we need only cos squared so the sine squared has to be converted into another identity the identity is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identical to 1 therefore we can write sine squared theta is 1 minus cos squared theta and exactly this is what we have to use here so cos squared a minus we can write 1 minus cos squared a if you remove the bracket it would be cos squared a minus 1 plus cos squared a and this turns out to be 2 cos squared a minus 1 therefore left hand side equal to right hand side and proved so the next thing that we have to do is hence hence usually means it's a good idea to take the previous uh, identities that you have used so we have to do this so this is a pretty specific question so sine p plus sine q is 2 sine something if you take a look here at the previous sum what we did sine something sine something plus plus sine another uh, angle sine this equals to 2 this is also 2 sine sine some sort of an angle some sort of an angle cos this so this uh, question of 9a1 and this one is exactly the same so how do we do it we start with let a plus b equals to p equation 1 so this portion over here I'm considering this to be p and a minus b is q equation 2 that means this term q is this one let me show this again we're using this thing over here and matching up with this one over here that's exactly what we're doing so a plus b becomes p and a minus b becomes q all we have to find is the value of a and b in terms of p and q so let's do this so if we add this to plus b and minus b cancels off and a plus a is twice a and p plus q is p plus q therefore a equals to p plus q divided by 2 and if you want to find the value of b we can write b equals to p minus a and the value of a is p plus q by 2 if we take lcm 2p minus 2 1 2 1 p plus q this is going to be 2 p minus p minus q divided by 2 which would be p minus q divided by 2 so we now have both the value of a and the value of b so we can write this down we can just copy this what happens of this plus this but this time we're going to copy it instead of writing a plus b we're going to replace it with p q and the value of a and b so we can write hence 
sine a plus b, I'm going to write p instead of a plus b, plus sine a minus b instead of a minus b, I'm going to write q equals to 2 sine a. Instead of writing a, I'm going to write the value of a, p plus q by 2. Cos b, instead of writing b, I'm going to write the value of b, p minus q by 2. That's it. Now, the next question is question number C. So what we have to do over here, remember trigonometric identities, they move on like a story. So we're going to use this over here to do this. So question number C is going to be left hand side. It's an identi identity that we have to prove. So sine 8x, so this is going to be the P, sine P. And we need another sine q. So there is a 2 over here. It cannot be sine q because it has no coefficient. I'm going to write this first. Sine 4x. And I'm going to put this 2 sine 6x over here. We're going to use this later on. So we can write this as sine p plus sine q is 2. So 2 sine p plus q. p is 8x. q is 4x divided by 2. Cos p minus q. 8x minus 4x divided by 2 and we have this 2 sine 6x over here. So we can write 2 sine 8 plus 4 is 12, 12 by 2 is 6x into cos 8, plus 8 minus uh, 4x is 4, 4 by 2 is twice x plus 2 sine 6x. So if we take 2 sine 6x common we get cos twice x plus 1. Now remember in the previous sum we have already written that cos twice a is 2 cos square a minus 1. So we're going to use it right now. So cos twice x is 2 cos square x minus 1 and we have a plus 1 over here from before. So now we can write 2 sine 6x and this minus and this minus cancels. So this would be 2 cos squared x. Now let's check what we have to prove. We have to prove 4 sine 6x cos squared x. So this turns out to be 2 to the 4 sine 6x cos squared x. Therefore, left hand side equal to right hand side that's all we had to prove now the final one is an integration it's integral calculus so in order to do this we have a limit of 0 to pi by 4 and we have to integrate sine 6x sine squared x so integrate 0 to pi by 4 so sine 6x sine squared x dx. Now the integration of uh, sine 6x so if you have to integrate suppose if you have to differentiate cos ax the answer is minus sine ax divided uh, into chain rule d by dx of ax. Now if you want to integrate this you just do the reverse. If you want to integrate this sine ax so the reverse would be cos ax, but the minus would go to the other side. So it would be minus cos ax. And here we have this multiplied, so it would go downstairs and be divided. So this is called the fundamental rule of calculus, which says that integration is nothing but the opposite of differentiation. And we have to write a plus c as an arbitrary constant. Uh, now, we cannot integrate this because two things are multiplied together. So what we can do, we can use the identity of the previous sum. Take a look what we did in the previous sum. In the previous sum, we wrote sine 8x plus sine 4x plus 2 sine 6x can be rewritten as 4 sine 6x cos square x. So using this identity from the previous identity, we can actually uh, make this into something that can be integrated. So let me write this down. For sine 8x plus sine 4x plus 2 sine 6x equals to 4 sine 6x cos square x. 
so the first thing we can do we have here sin square x so we have to convert this into sin square x over here so we can write 4 sin 6x 1 minus sin square x equals to 4 sin 6x minus 4 sin square x uh, we also have 4 sin square x sin 6x so we can send this thing over here we can write 4 sin 6x sin square x and let's bring everything over here so 4 sin 6x minus 2 sin 6x minus sin 4x minus sin 8x and it turns out to be 2 sin 6x minus sin 4x minus sin 8x and all we have to do for this expression hence integration of 0 to pi by 4 so instead of sin 6x sin square x we can write if we send this 4 to the other side it would be 1 by 4 2 sin 6x minus sin 4x minus sin 8x dx and uh, if we uh, multiply by 1 by 4 it would be integration of pi by 2 uh, this would be half 2 to the 4 sin 6x minus 1 by 4 sin 4x minus 1 by 4 sin 8x dx we still haven't integrated so let's integrate this now we can write half is half so sin 6x is going to be minus cos 6x divided by d by dx of 6x is 6 then 1 by 4 sin 4x is minus cos 4x divided by d by dx of 4x is 4 minus 1 by 4 sin 8x is minus cos 8x divided by 8 0 to pi by 4 and this would be minus 1 by 12 cos 6x minus minus plus 1 by 16 cos 4x minus minus plus 1 by 32 cos 8x and the limit is going to be 0 to pi by 4 okay now we know pi by 4 pi is in radian so it's 180 degree pi equals to 180 degree so pi by 4 is 45 degree so if you put the value minus 1 by 12 cos 6 times pi by 4 so 6 times pi by 4 is going to be uh, 6 pi by 4 plus 1 by 16 cos 4 into pi by 4 is going to be pi plus 1 by 32 cos 8 into pi by 4 is going to be 2 pi so this is the first value minus now let's put 0 over here so minus 1 by 12 cos 0 plus 1 by 16 cos 0 plus 1 by 32 cos 0 so what we get over here is minus 1 by 12 now we can we can do this calculation in either the radian mode by converting the calculator in the pi format or we can do it in the degree mode converting in our mind what the angle is going to be so 6 by 2 is 3 3 pi means 3 into 180 so cos 3 into 180 that is going to be the calculator thought we did cos 3 times 180 so we have to give a bracket cos 3 into 180 so be careful about this calculation because otherwise the calculator will not understand whether it's an angle or not so this is going to be minus 1 now this is correct so this is minus 1 plus 1 by 60 cos 180 degree or pi is also minus 1 plus 1 by 32 cos 360 degree or cos 0 is going to be 1 minus cos 0 is 1 so this is going to be minus 1 by 12 into 1 then this is going to be minus 1 by 16 into 1 this is going to be minus 1 by 32 into 1 let's do this calculation it's going to be a long calculation but we can do it 
partly in our mind and partly here. We can write minus minus plus 1 by 12. So 1 by 12. Then this is going to be 1 by 16 to minus 1 is minus 1 by 16. This is going to be minus minus plus. Uh, this is going to be plus 1 by 32. This would be plus 1 by 32. This is going to be minus minus plus plus 1 by 12. Then we have uh, minus 1 by 16. Minus 1 by 16. This is going to be minus 1 by 32. Minus 1 by 32. So this should be equals to 1 by 24. So the answer is 1 by 24.